Before we begin, let me tell you a, a, a story. Um, uh, some, about a year ago, oh, or maybe a year and a half, how long have you been at the consulate, Oscar? About a year, maybe? A year and a half? A year and a half. A year and a half. So it was about two years ago. Um, I developed a, a close relationship with um, uh, Consul General Oscar Rodriguez's uh, uh, predecessor, uh, Consul General uh, uh, Luis Malpica de la Madrid, who was here in Houston. And I asked, uh, I asked him for a gift. I said, look, I could go over to the store and buy a Mexican flag, but I don't want to do that. I want you to provide the flag. And months went by, perhaps a year and a half, and he left. And uh, about a month after he left, or two, uh, a box came in, and uh, they said, you know, uh, uh, Consul General Malpica left a box for you. And uh, I um, received the box, and I opened the box, and it was this beautiful Mexican flag uh, with this golden seal. So it was a gift of the, of the uh, uh, General Consul uh, uh, Malpica de la Madrid to the Mexico Center. And so it has a particular uh, symbolism that we have a, a flag that he, uh, that he gave us. So it was, a, uh, it was the sealing of a good partnership between the Mexico Center and the General Consulate in Houston. Uh, my name is Tony Payan. I'm the director of the Mexico Center at Rice University's uh, Baker Institute. I want to welcome Consul General uh, Oscar Rodriguez uh, to the, uh, this event. I want to uh, welcome the Undersecretary for North American Affairs, Paula Car Carreño King, who will join us in a few minutes. Uh, he's giving an interview right outside, and they'll come and, and, and join us at the table. I want to welcome uh, the Director General of the National Commission for the Development of the Indigenous Communities, Nuvia Mayorga Delgado. Welcome. Uh, I want to welcome all of you distinguished guests and friends of the Mexico Center. Uh, as many of you know, in the founding of the uh, Baker Institute, one of the goals was to capitalize on the advantages that Houston had to offer. Among the greatest of these advantages was the study of Mexico and the binational relationship. While this effort was initially lodged in the Latin America Initiative four years ago, we, we decided that it was time and sufficiently important for Houston, for Texas, and for the United States to create the Mexico Center, a truly binational unit within the Baker Institute with an impressive network of researchers on both sides of the border. The Mexico Center was designed to address key policy issues, including trade and economics, the rule of law, the US-Mexico border, and energy, among others. The founding of the center has proven visionary. All of these issues are ever more important and will indeed increase in importance over the next administration. Thus, we believe that at this point, the Mexico Center is well suited to offer unique and constructive analysis and recommendations to marshal further progress and deeper ties between the two countries in the coming years. Moreover, I thank you for coming to the Baker Institute to witness the launching of this initiative by the Mexican government, an initiative that fits well with the objectives of Rice University. Our institution has placed a priority on international student programs and recognizes the value of cross-cultural education and the important contributions that higher education can make to the development of a country like Mexico and the future of the binational relationship. Thus, Rice University has recently sought closer ties with Mexico through the National Council for Science and Technology, CONACYT. We seek to open Mexico to our students and open our doors to Mexican students. And thus, it is my pleasure today to welcome everyone to the launching of this program that comes to join other initiatives to bring the two countries closer together. It is my pleasure now to introduce Nuvia Mayorga Delgado, the Director General of the National Commission of Indigenous Community, who will introduce this program. And I have a short biography that I want to introduce into the record. Nuvia Mayorga Delgado is the Director General of the, Com of the National Commission for the Development of Indigenous Communities.
since her appointment in January of 2013 by President Enrique Peña Nieto. She previously served as the representative and chair of the Budget and Public Accounts Commission in the Federal House of Representatives in the 62nd legislature. She also served as Secretary of Finances for the government of the state of Hidalgo. Since this time, she has also served as coordinator for the Permanent Commission on Fiscal Officers of Mexico and the chair of the Fiscal Coordination Board of the National System of Fiscal Coordination in Mexico. For the state of Hidalgo, she also served as coordinator of administration and finances in the Secretary of Public Education and Director General of Expenditure in the Secretary of Finances. Mayorga Delgado has been an invited speaker at various conferences on economics and indigenous issues and writes weekly a weekly column for the uh, newspaper El Sol de Mexico. Mayorga holds a BA in public accounting with a focus on taxes and a certificate in administrative simplification with high management abilities from the Universidad Autónoma del Estado de Hidalgo. So at this point, it is also my pleasure to welcome, as promised, uh, the Undersecretary for North American Affairs, Paula Carreño King. Welcome. He will be speaking to us uh, later in the in the day. So the microphones are now um, uh, Nuvia Mayorga Delgados uh, for her uh, presentation. Uh, we will have her presentation in a short video. Right after your presentation, we have the video ready for you. Please. Thank you and welcome. Thank you, everybody. Muy buenos días, muy buenas tardes, perdón, me da mucho gusto. Good morning, or rather good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be received here in Houston. And I'm very thankful to distinguished Dr. Tony Payan, director of the Mexico Center, to receive the CDI as a very noble institution in Mexico for the support of the indigenous peoples. I thank also distinguished Paula Carreño, the the Secretary for North America of the Foreign Minister, who is here and with whom we have been working. We have been working also with the uh, Secretary of State for a few years. And all of these projects since I was a the Secretary of Tourism in the Government of Mexico. I thank the representative of the clubs, the Im Immigrants Federations, and all the institutions that accompany us today. I also want to thank Oscar Rodriguez, uh, the Consul General of Mexico, thank you very much for being here with us. Uh, representatives of the media here, thank you very much for your attendance. It's an honor to be here uh, as the General Director of the National Commission for the Development of Indigenous Peoples and with the Undersecretary of Foreign Relations. I want to express my gratitude for your willingness and your commitment to work with us and for giving us this space to launch this program, which will allow us to expand and strengthen our country's bilateral relation. This is a pilot program with the participation of uh, young students from Mexico and the US with a solid academic foundation so that they can uh, provide ideas and innovative uh, collaboration schemes with the indigenous communities in Mexico to promote their economic development. Young students whose vision and participation in the program Mexican Dream will allow them also to find again their roots, to retake their cultural inheritance or heritage, to know the history of Mexico, and to create a history of success with the indigenous communities with which they engage. Uh, President Enrique Peña Nieto is convinced that international cooperation is a basic asset to contribute to the integral development of all countries. And therefore, this action on the part of the Mexican government uh, are based in the framework of uh, global responsibility for development and beyond the borders to have points where uh, the two nations can work together for their mutual benefit to interact also 
and achieve prosperity. An example of this is undoubtedly the Mexican Dream Program, which I will introduce to you. This is a cooperation, a collaboration uh, between students from the U.S. and Mexico with indigenous communities in Mexico, which will allow to strengthen the academic training of the students and at the same time to implement actions that will result in productive projects so that the indigenous populations of Mexico can improve their lives. If you allow me now, I will present this program. I will also show a video where we can see the ecotourism projects which are part of this program of the Mexican Dream. Uh, the Mexican Dream uh, a program emerged with the idea of bringing together Mexican-American students to enterprises, cooperatives, and indigenous communities in Mexico, where there are great opportunities for cooperation and learning. Uh, the Mexican dream is to create, to innovate beyond borders and to learn from our places of origin and destination. The Mexican dream is meant to share ideas, experiences, knowledge, and a culture of community in favor of development. Mexican dream is to collaborate, to link tradition with modernity, to strengthen and empower Mexican communities both in Mexico and in the U.S. Now, what is the objective for this program? First, allow participating students and emerging leaders to connect with their heritage and Mexican traditions uh, in order to obtain a deeper understanding and appreciation of Mexican history and culture, as well as its current economic and political situation. E incorporar to tecnologías generate y ideas and incorporate technologies and models to enhance productive Comisión projects uh, chosen by the National Commission for the Development of Indigenous in Peoples in coordination, coordination with the Foreign Affairs Department a través de la to develop productive ties through innovation, el, creativity, el and entrepreneurship. Este programa de sueño mexicano es un proyecto uh, this is an immersion project offering Mexican-American students the opportunity to explore their cultural heritage and traditions, as well as to immerse themselves in Mexican history and culture through hands-on learning in places or locations designated in Mexico. Uh, students will learn about Mexico alongside scholars and experts, senior government officials, and will also help in problem resolution, working with the rural communities as they face their challenges. The students are encouraged to provide new ideas and knowledge to the project and to collaborate by uh, working with the community at the local, national, and international level. Uh, we have 10 locations, 10 companies that were selected by the National Commission for the Development of Indigenous Peoples, or CDI, and the Foreign Relations Ministry. Uh, these enterprises have already achieved significant levels of cultural and tourist development, economic development, in, uh, or uh, among indigenous communities in Mexico. And I'm going to sh show them to you one by one. Here we have Bird este, Island, or Pájaros eh, Island, in Campeche. This project of ecotourism offers food and accommodation services, kayak, as well as uh, small boat Esta and kayak trips around the uh, Bird's Island. Uh, in this island, migrant native birds and really converge. Natural. They can be observed in their natural habitat. De the tour Esto also includes dolphin sighting. This is located in the southern part of the country, nuestro in the state of Campeche. Our second project, Eco Alberto Park in the state of Hidalgo. This is an ecotourism center that emerged with the aim of reducing este migration. This has been an objective uh, that the company wanted to have so that uh, 
fewer people would migrate. Let's support this great project to work with a beautiful nature. Uh, this uh, project offers thermal water pools, lodging in cabins made with uh, local materials. The uh, star product of the center is a night walk, symbolizing the walk to the north and all the complications that migrants face when they cross into the United States. States. Eh, el que puedan pasar a Estados Unidos. Este proyecto que uh, vemos aquí this project that we see here Morelos, for uh, peasant women or mujer campesina in Morelos is an este ecotourism center. De un uh, this uh, provides services at hostel comedor, or temascal, uh, has dining facilities, uh, trekking, horse riding, and traditional healing Además, practices. También, also, Obtienen ingresos a través the de la center earns income through the marketing of some uh, non-perishable foods, sweets, medicinal plants, and uh, handicrafts produced by the inhabitants of this Los area in the state of Morelos. Our next project La in La Chatao, the state of Oaxaca, Oaxaca es un this is indígena. a state uh, that has a large indigenous population, close to 50% of the population is a native population, and we have uh, poverty and extreme poverty among this, uh, these populations. This project has benefited the population by uh, reducing the migration rate. It has a community center, and it has uh, allowed children and young people to value their culture, improve natural public areas. La Chata offers trekking, visits to archaeological sites, biking tours, horse riding, traditional healing practices, and thematic tours. It's a forested area. Chiapas, another state in Mexico with a high indigenous population. Uh, we have a project at Three Lakes or Tres Lagunas, another ecotourism project. It's in an area with abundant vegetation, uh, 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 jungle type vegetation. It's a great opportunity to get to know the local fauna, the uh, white-tailed deer, tucan, scarlet Macaw, Sarguaro monkey, and the snowy sparrow hawk, as you can see in these images. Another interesting uh, program or project is in the state of Mexico, in the Stone Corral, Corral de Piedra, the Otomi uh, indigenous group denominated region Ndavi, place where the logs float or a place where water abounds. After some time, the residents change the name to Amanalco, which means the pond or place near the lake or Aprovechando water el lago, extension. El centro turístico ofrece uh, taking advantage of this lake, the Ecotourism Center offers recreational activities such as uh, native bird watching and also the migratory bird watching as well as the white-tailed deer. Tenemos otro proyecto de Oaxaca. We have another project in Oaxaca, este es Ecotourism Extran. This is a place whose objective is to preserve the forest area in which it is located. It offers walks in the woods to observe the existing wildlife and the local flora. It offers a walk to the Pozuelos Mount and the Cuachirindo Mountain. The latter has a watchtower, a viewpoint to uh, where you can see a monument dedicated to the Zapoteco warriors. In Querétaro, in the center of the country, we have the Salitrera Hacienda. This is a, uh, an old hacienda that was uh, recovered, restored. It purse spaces filled with culture and natural beauty. Uh, the project was developed in an indigenous area, conveying the magic and the charm of the Otomi and Chichimeca people. It has been declared as a World Heritage Site by UNESCO. We have another project in the state of Chiapas, again in the south 
of our country. It's called Topche. It's a camp located in natural surroundings and by the uh, uh, bank of the Lacanja River and the Lacandona Forest. The Lacandona Forest is the lung of our country, provides oxygen to the whole country. Some of the activities that can be carried out there are treks to the Las Golondrinas Cascade or to the uh, Lacanja Ruins and as well as a visit to the traditional Lacandon Milpa. Or mill. We have another project in Michoacán, the Yunuen Cabins. Uh, the project offers um, several tourism-related services, allowing interaction between visitors and residents to learn about the customs, traditions, and with the beliefs of the Purepecha uh, tribe in Michoacán. Now, what are the requirements that we have uh, developed? between the CDI and the Foreign Relations Ministry. Uh, first requirement is to be of Mexican descent, to be enrolled as a student in one of the participating institutions, uh, to be enrolled in one of the following years of study, submit an application, and enroll in the following area of study, depending on the type or, or nature of the project. Could be agriculture, education, en ciencia y tecnología, en manufactura, manufacture, en negocios, business, en energía, en ingeniería y en turismo. Tourism. And also comply with the participation guidelines issued by the uh, State Department or Foreign Relations Ministry and the CDI, which is the National Commission. The duration the program will start in the summer of 2017. You'll have a duration of four weeks, three to four weeks. Uh, during the duration of the program, the participants will engage with scholars, experts, and Mexican government officials and the community itself in order to deepen the understanding and cooperation dynamic with indigenous peoples. The participating institutions are, we have the Foreign Relations Ministry, the CDI, which is the National Commission for the Development of Indigenous Peoples. We have the university, where we are right now, Rice University. We're very thankful that they have hosted us. We also have the University of Southern California. We have the Rio Salado Está Community College Texas in Arizona. We have the uh, Mexican consulate, the U.S. consulate, and the University of Texas in Austin. For the participants, the expected outcomes from uh, these ecotourism projects are to relate or identify with Mexican culture, to contribute their knowledge and skills to enhance the projects, and to generate new knowledge and practice in favor of the recipient group. Groups. For the enterprises or uh, uh, beneficiary groups or recipient groups to have an updated business plan to identify needs and areas of opportunity where short-term improvements and measures might benefit the project substantially and to promote internationally their projects. Uh, those would be the requirements and the outcomes, expected outcomes of the program with our indigenous population and with the students, the uh, Mexican-American students. In order to carry this project out, uh, I'm very thankful to the University of Southern California, to the Salado College, the University of Texas and Austin, and the Institute helping now with the launching of this program. And I want to thank also the Mexican consulate uh, that's getting involved in this program. This will allow us to fulfill our objectives and mainly to support the indigenous community in Mexico so they, they can become micro-entrepreneurs based on their own vision of the world. Thank you very much. We'll show you now a short video. As I was saying at the end of the presentation, we can uh, appreciate the richness of nature in the uh, indigenous communities in Mexico. Thank you very much. Con la ayuda de la CDI, la comunidad lacandona de la Canjá Chansayab 
ha logrado aprovechar la belleza de sus recursos naturales, generando así empleo y una mejor calidad de vida para sus familias. Topche es un campamento ecoturístico, ubicado en los márgenes de la Reserva de la Biosfera de Montes Azules. Un hermoso sitio protegido por el legado cultural maya. Recorre sus mágicos lugares que mezclan árboles majestuosos, fauna exótica y vestigios arqueológicos. Sorpréndete con la belleza de Topche. Soy cantar este a La CDI entiende y atiende para servir a los pueblos indígenas. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It is indeed a pleasure to, to um, have Rice University be the, the launching pad for this important program of exchanges. Uh, and we hope that uh, there will be many, many candidates from throughout the United States that will visit uh, these uh, sites and work with these communities uh, to solve their problems and develop uh, economically and uh, in a way that is friendly to the environment. I think it, this is an important program because I believe that very often in the United States, the bad stories are told over and over and over again, and we've seen them in the media. But there are many, many other good stories about Mexico. Those of us who travel to Mexico often know that there's a lot of good going on. I've always said that 98% of all Mexicans are really honest, law-abiding people who uh, want to follow the law, pay their taxes, and uh, send their kids to, to school uh, and uh, uh, essentially contribute to national development. Uh, most people are uh, generous and welcoming to the country. And so this is a good opportunity uh, uh, to showcase a program that intends to do, convey uh, the good that is going on in Mexico. And we certainly hope that you find many, many candidates to share in this. Now, let me take a little time to introduce our uh, guest uh, today, our second guest for this uh, event this afternoon. Uh, Paulo uh, Carreño King is the Under Secretary for North American Affairs of the uh, Foreign Ministry in Mexico. Uh, Paulo and I uh, shared a forum just a few weeks ago in Mexico City. Uh, we were invited by a group of very young, talented Mexicans uh, from uh, uh, the Mexico City, who are very, very concerned about Mexico and want to contribute to an honest and open dialogue about Mexico. And um, the forum at that time was about North America, and was uh, our uh, common future. And we had an interesting dialogue with other academics uh, about whether North America has a future. Uh, and obviously, uh, today, uh, the United States is holding elections through the Electoral College. Uh, and it will be a challenging four years for the binational relationship. So I'm anxious to see uh, what the perspective from Mexico is. I know it's still developing. It's probably incomplete still. Uh, but I think that uh, it will be interesting to hear uh, from Paulo uh, uh, what uh, Mexico's strategy and thoughts are uh, on this important issue uh, for which today is a landmark day. Uh, because the Electoral College is meeting in our state capitals. Let me uh, uh, read a little bit of uh, uh, the Honorable Paulo Carreño King's uh, biography. He is the Under Secretary for North American Affairs in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Mexico. He coordinates the region's 55 consulates and fosters the country's presence while strengthening ties with the United States and Canada through trade, labor, and investment exchanges. From 2015 to 2016, Carreño served as the nation's brand and international media coordinator for the President of Mexico. 
In this role, he managed the country's brand abroad and worked with senior government officials, the private sector, and civil society to encourage more foreign investment, add value to exports of Mexican goods, and attract more tourists to the country. Carreño has held several senior posts in the Mexican financial sector, including eight years as the Communications and Institutional Relations Executive Director of Grupo Financiero Banamex, affiliated with Citibank. Carreño is the faculty member at the Institute for uh, Public Administration at the Universidad Iberoamericana. He holds a master's degree in public international law from Leiden University, a degree in English from Columbia University, and a law degree from the Universidad Iberoamericana. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Tony. Uh, for that warm introduction. Que honor, querida Nubia, estar aquí contigo. Uh, and, and it's great to be with you all uh, this, this afternoon. Um, uh, I'm very glad to be here uh, with you today in this great occasion. It's an utmost privilege to be in this magnificent campus and to participate with you all in the launch of the Mexican Green El Sueño Mexicano. And I'm very glad because, as Tony briefly mentioned, uh, we did share uh, this forum uh, and we did talk about what the Mexican government was uh, to do in order to create a better environment for, to foster the bilateral relationship between Mexico and the United States. And I believe that the El Sueño Mexicano the, the Mexican dream is a uh, magnificent example of what we need to do more in order to foster a better image uh, of our bilateral relationship and the future of our two countries. Because it's an example in which we have the participation of a government uh, through the consulates and the Comisión uh, Nacional de Desarrollo de los Pueblos Indígenas uh, headed by Nubia. We have the participation of uh, some of the best, I believe, universities, colleges, colleges in, in, in the United States, such as RISE. And we have as well the civil uh, society working towards one end, towards one objective. So I would like to start by thanking RISE University, uh, its president, David Lebron, uh, and certainly Ambassador Jere Jan, uh, director of the Baker Institute for hosting us today. I particularly appreciate uh, your sincere committing to this great program, a program that will allow students to contribute to productive social enterprises in a Mexican indigenous communities. As my uh, esteemed friend and colleague Nubia just mentioned, El Sueño Mexicano moves us forward upon a goal that Mexico and the United States have been pursuing for a long time now but which is particularly important in current times, to build bridges between our two countries. Bridges will allow us to be more competitive and prosperous as a region, to be more inclusive and consciousness of one another. We have been doing this, firstly, by serving our first generation migrants and assisting them in their integration processes to their host communities in this great country. Secondly, we have been reaching out to people, US citizens of Mexican origin, that live here in order to help them to reconnect to their roots and to include them in the foundation of the bridges between our two countries. In these tasks, we have not been alone. We have counted with the help of many friends and partners, such as Rice University, that share our belief that the true potential of our countries can only be reached by building every day a greater understanding between our societies and sharing everything that makes us great. Our culture, our skills, our aspirations to become a better integrated region, and above all, our people. I would also like to take this opportunity to sincerely recognize all the skillful and committed team from the National Commission for the Development of the Indigenous People, the CDI, for their leadership in this project. Without you and your team, Nubia, this could not have been possible. 
Programs such as this are much needed during our times, as I mentioned in the beginning. Times in which becomes relevant, if not urgent, to debunk stereotypes about one another because of ethnic national origin, religious belief, or political ideals. The best way to understand that such differences, instead of dividing us, enrich our communities is by people-to-people -people interaction and appreciation of the other. We need to put ourselves in our neighbor's shoes and try to see the world from their side. And we should be always looking for the opportunity to grow and learn from each other with respect towards the things that might even set us apart. The Mexican dream, El Sueño Mexicano, strives to do just that by connecting Mexican origin students with developments projects in Mexico. They will be able to connect with their family roots, learn from their past to have a better future, while using their skills and knowledge to contribute to local so social projects. So far, Initiatives that link efforts from the academia, the private sector, civil society, and governments have had a tremendous success. A good example of this is Programa 3x1 para Migrantes. Established in 2002, this program it has been a key mechanism to link Mexican nationals to the development of their hometowns in Mexico with the help, coordination, and support of the Mexican government and the private sector. In this program, for every dollar put up by a Mexican migrant, the federal, state, and municipal governments in Mexico contribute three more to support local infrastructure such as schools, hospitals, and roads. The program has evolved and now includes options for community and individual productive projects. Just in 2015, to give you an example, almost 2,000 projects were completed, and we're on track to even go beyond this number at the end of this year. For these efforts to succeed, the participation of Mexican-American communities here in the US is crucial. For us, they are some of the best ambassadors of Mexico abroad, the best example of the richness produced by the melting of two robust cultures. And they are a link between both communities and the foundation of a better future for Mexico and the United States. That is why we are so optimistic about the Mexican dream. We are also so committed more now than ever to take advantage of their potential to make a region a, and our countries certainly more developed and prosper. I am confident that the participation of in this program will allow students to grow professionally and personally. And hopefully, it will also motivate them to continue down to the path of mutual, mutual understanding and respect while disseminating these values among their peers. As we launch this program, here's my sincere invitation for students of this great university. Get involved. Participate. You will not regret it. I am sure that your experience will no doubt enrich the lives of all us, both sides of the border. I thank once again to Rice University, the James Baker Institute for Public Policy, as well as the Mexico Center for this great opportunity. I look forward to continue working with you in many, many innovative projects such as this one to increase ties, to build bridges between our two countries. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Under Secretary. I think we have a few minutes, uh, 15, 20 minutes, for a Q&A. I'm sure there are some questions, uh, both about the program and uh, in the context uh, with, within which it is taking place. Yes, right here. Uh, Tony, could you tell us a little bit about the backgrounds of the students, what you're looking for in requirements, and the actual number of students that, that will be participating? I, I don't know. Did everybody hear me, or should I? OK. Um, I was curious about the number of students that will be participating in the program and the background of the students and maybe requirements for students to participate. ¿Cuántos estudiantes más o menos esperan y cuáles son los antecedentes que debe tener un, el perfil del estudiante que participe en este programa? Claro que sí. El número de estudiantes que tenemos, ¿sí me escuchan? Eh. 
uh, yeah, the number of students that uh, we have considered for the first uh, stage of this program for the first semester 2017 is 50. We want to have 50 students. The specialties or the kind of degrees that they should be pursuing, they should uh, be related to energy, business administration, management, and regarding um, knowledge areas. Uh, history, agriculture, education, science and technology, engineering, and of course, tourism. I have a, a, a question myself. T tell me, um, obviously one of the prerequisites for students to participate in programs, in exchange programs like this one, is uh, to, be, th there has been a lot of uh, uh, discussion about Mexico and the United States, uh, 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 about its uh, security situation and so on. Uh, how exactly uh, can American students be reassured that when they move to these uh, locations, these 10 locations that you have selected, uh, their uh, public safety, their safety, personal safety, will be guaranteed so that they can go in there and be fully dedicated to aiding these communities in solving their very local problems uh, instead of being worried about their, their safety. Uh, how was that uh, considered in uh, putting together this project? This is important because I know that students come to me all the time and ask me about uh, going to Mexico, and we have had one student that went to them in Monterrey, and one student student that went to Itam. He's just back uh, from a semester at Itam, but they always come and they ask those questions. Okay, yeah, let's address this question first. The requirements for the students that, um, that want to go there, the most important one is they should be from Mexican um, uh, origin. Uh, they should be full-time students. They should be interested in Mexican culture. They should uh, have the will to support the population uh, in Mexico, the indigenous population. They should be studying one of the specialties that we just mentioned a few minutes ago about the other question, and uh, on behalf of the Secretary of State and our institute, we are considering paying for transportation and travel expenses, and we are supporting the, uh, you know, we want to support the indigenous population, so we will pay for their travel expenses. And in terms of safety and security, these are places where we have not had any uh, problems with safety. The indigenous populations in Mexico are really noble areas. Uh, safe. The indigenous population in our country it has uh, huge values, a lot of principles. Because of their culture, because of their education, they're extremely friendly when people go there to, uh, to help them. They are really willing to receive people and, and receive these tools. This is a great opportunity that we have to work with these universities, and these universities are going to be there to share their knowledge and support our indigenous population. So the first people that will take care of the students are going to be the people belonging to this indigenous language population. Requirements. Many of these communities uh, speak na uh, native languages, and they uh, speak Spanish, but some of the students, especially uh, with the presence of Mexicans in this country for a very long time, many of these descendants of Mexicans perhaps no, no longer speak Spanish. And they certainly are not going to speak these uh, native uh, uh, languages. Uh, what are the language requirements, if any, and how do you bridge uh, that uh, communication gap, if any? Of course. In Mexico, there is uh, 68 indigenous populations that speak different languages. Uh, the most predominant is Nahuatl Otomi, um, uh, so we talked about Chiapas. Uh, the CDI has been training over 600 interpreters. Those interpreters will be there. They will go with the students to the indigenous populations. So 
that they can establish communication. Um, in many cases, our indigenous population in these places, they do not speak Spanish. They have their own language. But through the help of these interpreters, they're going to be able to communicate in English or Spanish. Medina, did I see the hand over there? Yeah. Oh, over here, and then we'll go, we'll go back to you. Yes. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Ulises Good afternoon, Valderas. I'm Luis Valderas, I'm a teacher at the University of St. Thomas, a uh, uh, couple of blocks Rice. away from here, very close to Rice. De, My question uh, has to do with other types of projects. Obviously, right now you're talking Nosotros about ecotourism a lot, but we do have a social uh, enterprise program at the university uh, where we develop a project with rural communities and indigenous Mayas communities, in Mayan Petaca, communities in, uh, in, the uh, state of in the state of Yucatan. Y, uh, and I would like to know if there is any kind of support for this kind of project, maybe during a second phase of uh, this project, and uh, then again going back to the requirements for the students. I would imagine that we're talking about perhaps students that are in the third uh, or fourth year of their education. Well, they should be halfway through the through the program, through the four-year program. I, I think your question is a great question. I really thank you for your question. Uh, these are the productive projects that the Mexican government, the CDI, has been sponsoring. And this is what we offer the indigenous population. These are handcrafts that come from the state of Querétaro. And uh, if you notice the quality, there is the design, there's the quality uh, of what our indigenous population is producing in the state of Mexico and in Mexico. And now we have this program that is called Manos Indígenas, Indigenous Hands. So our artists, when they sell a product such as this doll, this is one example. We have many, many like it. They make their own bags to sell them. This is their brand. Uh, this is a well-known brand already. This was launched and uh, meets all the requirements of the CDI. It, it shows Mexican quality. The added value of this doll is it includes the design. Uh, this has taken about two, three years of training provided by the government to the community that made this doll in the state of Querétaro. And uh, this is the next next step for us. Many of these projects, handcrafts, this is subsidized, 100% subsidized by the CDI. This is something that we do. We supervise, we help with design, we help with quality control uh, so that we guarantee this kind of project. And we provide the way for you to know what the history of this doll is and how it has evolved generation to generation. And it has been done, made entirely by hand. This kind of project, this is just one example. We have honey, for instance. You have a bottle of honey uh, in, a, in a glass bottle. Not like it used to be in the past. Maybe it came in plastic bottles in the past. Now you have it in glass bottles with its own label that guarantees Mexican quality. So that is added value that we offer. And uh, this is also another eco project that we're introducing. Uh, Manos indígenas, calidad mexicana. This is uh, something that you see across many different products, and we're trying to market this so that our indigenous population can uh, make a profit out of this. Buenas tardes. Um, gracias por las presentaciones. My Good afternoon. Thanks for the presentation. And the duration, and if there's credit equivalency, or is it voluntary extracurricular? Do you think the students would be best undergraduate or graduate or both? The level of students and is the duration a number of weeks or months? And have you been recommending credit um, for the degree program or is it mostly voluntary extracurricular? Thank you. Gracias. Contesto. 
Es to to totalmente voluntario. This is totally volunteer. Uh, voluntary insisto, thing. Um, I insist it has to be somebody uh, Mexican um, origin. The duration of the program, Sueño Mexicano, is three weeks. It's a three-week program. And what we're looking for with the Secretary of State, with the consulate, we want to give the students credit for this, for, the, uh, for those that go to Mexico to train our ecotourism projects. We want to get some credit for that. Quick question as a follow-up to that before I go to David. Um, uh, I know that program is targeted to uh, uh, students of Mexican descent. Um, but isn't it important also to convey or, or to try to create an image of Mexico among non-Hispanic students, among uh, the other groups that might, and in places like Montana and Dakota, and places where, where Mexico is not known well. Are there any plans to expand to that population, to regions and places? We know Mexico well in Texas. We know Mexico well in California uh, and, uh, and in Hispanic communities. But isn't that part of the important outreach, especially at this time, at this juncture in history to reach out to other populations where the image of Mexico may be a lot more damaged than in the Hispanic communities? Oh, of course, of course, yes, yes. Uh, we are totally open to this, uh, both at the Secretary of State and the CDI. We want to open this to other um, student markets, so to speak, other institutes, other universities. This is our pilot project. And following the pilot project, we will have more experience and we will see the results that we're getting uh, by doing this type of ecotourism project with this Mexican. American students first. But of course, yes, in the future it would be very timely to do that, to, to be able to receive other students. We have more than 200 eco-tourism uh, projects, like the ones that we just saw. Uh, we're following them and we are holding their hands so that the projects are successful and people get to know them. We talked about 10, but in fact we do have more than 200 and that would be our goal. And that would be the goal for 2016 on. I mean, 2016 is over by 2018. Yes, you said that the program was completely free. And what does that include? And also, how much is that costing the Mexican government per student? We have a budget of about $100,000 per student. It would be about $2,000 uh, for tickets and uh, per diem. Um, that, that would be about it. There's a question back there. Okay. Uh, you partially answer one of my questions. If the program is successful in 2017, will it continue to other communities? Uh, most of the communities that you presented were located like in the center and the south of Mexico. Will it eventually include northern areas, Almada, Jackie, or any of the other communities in the northern parts? Yes, of course. In this first uh, step, we are working with the center south of the country because the biggest number of people, we have um, 15 million indigenous people in Mexico, according to the registry that we have. That's uh, from information from 2010. 40% of them are located in the center and the south of the country. And that is why we consider this is the first step in this project. And as part of the pilot uh, project, we're starting there. But for the future, we are thinking about Sonora or Radamuris in the state of Chihuahua. For the future, we will do that. Hi, I'm Michaela Christopher, representing AJC, the Belfer Institute for Latino and Latin American Affairs. Thank you both for being here. Um, I wanted to know what is expected from the alumni of the program and how they will be involved in advancing the Mexican-United States relationship once they enter the professional workforce. Thank you both. Lo que nosotros esperamos what we expect from this 
uh, work with our Mexican American students and uh, the outcomes of these ecotourism projects is first of all to make them into micro entrepreneurs these, these are business careers also to contribute to the uh, environment uh, from the energy standpoint and let's remember that this is an indigenous population with their uses and customs with a very old culture but what they need to do is to innovate they need to reach the uh, the current times. So we're going to use tourism, but tourism as a business. So that's one of the expected outcomes for the indigenous population. I can talk now about the ecotourism project in the state of Hidalgo. We have uh, thermal waters there, there are pools, and that's, it's a local group the indigenous population in Mexico works as a community. So they want to be up to date with the best strategies for tourism and for business in this type of uh, water parks. And that's how we want to help them. That's the uh, advice. I see any other questions, but I have one for Paulo, uh, 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 the Undersecretary Carreño King. Uh, I'm reminded of a famous phrase by George W.H. Bush. Uh, he uh, spoke about a thousand points of light, very powerful image that he used. Um, this is one point of light uh, in this rather dark horizon that we're looking at right now. Uh, what other programs is the foreign ministry in addition to this one at the intersection of the Indigenous Communities Commission and the Foreign Ministry, are you working on to create not one point of light, but a thousand points of light? Certainly, thank you, Tony. Uh, well, uh, we, we don't see it that dark, uh, to tell you the <laughs> truth. <laughs> but we certainly need, need lots of light, because what we need to bring back Tony, and I think uh, the analogy couldn't be perfect. What we need to bring back is light. Light uh, to a reality. Light to, to really uh, illustrate uh, in what stage the relationship between Mexico and the United States is right now. Uh, because it, it really strikes me, and, 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 and I wouldn't lie to you if I show you the studies what, uh, the, which we have regarding the bilateral relationships in which there is one reality in terms of what we have accomplished together, the two countries in 200 years of diplomatic relationships that we already have, uh, and uh, what the perception in most places, some of those that you just mentioned, Tony, uh, that most people have about Mexico and Mexicans. Uh, so there's a lot of work to be done. There's a lot of light that we need to uh, bring to these efforts. And we believe uh, that, uh, and that's, this is something that we're doing uh, in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, that uh, one of our best allies in this effort is not just uh, certainly uh, the universities such as RISE and many others, uh, certainly the private sector, but above all uh, civil society and the at least 23 million U.S. citizens of Mexican origin that, uh, well, every electoral process, every year, every time that may need to be heard present themselves in a stronger manner. So uh, I would leave, uh, you know, I think, a clear sign of what we're doing. We need to, you know, turn our sight into these 23 million uh, U.S. citizens of Mexican origin to be more participative in their own country, which is now the United States, but looking back at the roots in Mexico. And, and that will shed a lot of light. 
that would certainly bring a lot of uh, information about what we are uh, as a region and what we can accomplish together. So we're working with them uh, directly. We are bringing, again, the private sector to uh, efforts and programs such as uh, this one. And uh, we are, as well, uh, reaching uh, local authorities, not just Washington, which is always important, uh, but also every state, every municipality, every city in which we have these clear signs of the many, many contributions that we have built uh, between the two countries. Thank you very much. I want to uh, thank our guests, uh, certainly uh, Under Secretary Carreño King, for taking time to come to Houston uh, so close to Christmas. And I certainly want to uh, thank Nuvia. Thank you very much, the General Director for the Indigenous Commission, uh, the Development of Indigenous Communities in Mexico. And I want to thank you uh, for spending this afternoon uh, with us in this important announcement. This is the first time I understand that this program is announced. Uh, again, one point of light among many, we hope, Indeed. and so it is an important forum to have rice uh, the place where this program was announced, uh, and we're certainly willing to, to work, and we're, I would, we'll try to send our own students. And thank you all for taking time, again, when you perhaps should be shopping for Christmas, <laughs> uh, to, uh, to be here with us. Thank you very much, and thank you very much.